Yeah, I'll do your low talk at the very back and your loud speak up front and make my life an even bigger hell. Do that for me, would you? Okay, Mike. If I hear you say bang up job, we're cutting and you're doing it over again. No bang up job and no hack writing. Those what? are no, two hack things. Writing has to be said. No, fuck no. Well, no. There, there's no, there's no hack writing. I will stop this fucking production. Yo, man, you're doing a bang up job, you know that? <laughs> right, well, welcome back to the show. I think we're doing a bang up job. Man, I had that covered, Doug. I was going to do it better than that. Oh, really? Yeah. Fucking didn't do it then. It's too late. It's oh, too early. Fuck. He's going to cut that. Fucking right. Hi. Welcome to Hydra's Teeth. Cut. Cut what, man? I'll cut your fucking throat, man. You sit there and you keep reading Roshi Lemon, bro. Oh, you're hard. I'm hard as fuck. Hack as fuck. No hack writing here, man. <laughs> I didn't fail you, man. You need to go fuck yourself, man. <laughs> Always problem with the on-air talent. Whenever you're ready. Yeah, because there's no talent off-air. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Kraftroy, he's cool. Yo, shout out to Mumbles. And you better put that part in there. He's like one of the only people who watch this fucking cursed show, man. Okay, yeah, great. Um, say shout out to Mumbles again without dissing the show, and I'll put it in there. <laughs> shout out to Mumbles. Look at the camera while you're doing it. Oh, now I gotta look at the camera. Shout out to Mumbles. One of the only motherfuckers who watches this show. How's that dissing the motherfucking show? Well, now you brought up the fact that we dissed the show, and it looks even worse. Yeah, I dissed the show, man. In that first episode, I said I hate this fucking show. Shout out to Mumbles one more time so we have a clean one. Shout out to Mumbles. Without talking like he's an idiot. This is, you're a fucking asshole, man. <clears throat> Alright, so turtles. Turtle power. T U R T L E power. Yeah, actually, you spelled right. <laughs> That's the motherfucking song from the first motherfucking movie, bro. Yeah, I know. If I'm not mistaken, wasn't that Vanilla Ice who did that too? That was the second movie. The second oh, movie. No, oh, no, that was glorious. <laughs> oh, okay. Whatever. Oh, boy. Fucking turtles. All right, so what happens in this one? So this is, you might want to state too that this is prior to their color coding. They didn't have color coding. Oh no 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 no. no, no. We'll, we'll put some, we'll put some right? screens up, but none of this is color. This was done in 1980. Ah fuck, I'm asking the question again. 80 something, man. This comic book came out. The first one came out. It was a smash. Eighty-four. It was a smash hit. Mm. Um, and the best part about the turtles, like, even though they're so mainstream now, back then, this these comics were underground. Mm. Like this wasn't a big. This wasn't like a Marvel or DC or some a big publishing company putting the comic. Book. This was just a personal thing. How underground? Uh, like the the guy uh, Kevin Eastman, Peter Laird, who made them, like took out a loan for a couple thousand dollars to get this thing printed, and then managed to easily pay it back because it was a big hit. Nice. So yeah, um, the storyline is gritty, a lot gritty compared to anything you're seeing today. Um, people get killed, a lot of people get killed. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm pretty sure in the first couple pages, four, yeah, people get, people get, <laughs> people get fucked up pretty easily. Like um, this storyline is a much more mature than what you would normally see even on TV today, to be perfectly honest. Well, it makes like, sense. This isn't good stuff, for when sure. You got, when you got four dudes, three of them are armed with sharp weapons, someone's gonna get murdered. Yeah. And they're funny people with guns, and they're chopping right. them up. Like, and then the thing about this comic book, this especially this particular run, is that they don't pull hits in this. Like, you're seeing people getting sliced open, mm. not not graphic and gory, but you're seeing people getting getting cut up and stuff like that. Um, what else is going on? It, gritty, and also in terms of the actual storylines, um, this isn't a happy "we're saving the world" story. Mm -hmm. Like, like the the current turtle mythos is about you know right and wrong, good and evil, stuff like that. Whereas in the comic book, it's more about honor. Which is a very different concept. Mm -hmm. In terms of, you can do something that's honorable and be completely despicable. Well, if you're a samurai, you, you wouldn't be able to agree with a ninja having honor. That's true. Yeah, that's pretty true. But it is. Also <laughs> irrelevant. <Carry> also <laughs> <on>. <laughs> So it's honor orientated. Yeah, it's very honor orientated. Mm -hmm. uh, Things, it's very much a reactionary story, like, the first kickoff of the story is the Turtles versus the Shredder. Mm. And, 
you know, and, uh, I don't want to spoil it, but... They whoop his ass. They whoop his ass. They came home in the first issue. Splinter, um, the Shredder is actually not a major character in these storylines. Also referred to as a punk-ass bitch. Yep. With sharp, sharp blades. Yeah. He, um... That's a P-A-B. Like, the, the, actually, like, to be perfectly honest, the Turtles spend more time in space, which is, like, the third issue where they end up going to space and finding, like, Triceratons, like, anamorphic Triceratops people, more than they would actually fight the Shredder. Mm. Later on in the story, like, they, they end up beating the Shredder first. A couple of random Avengers, Baxter Stockman is introduced. They go to space. April Nero is introduced. They do a couple of random Avengers. And then out of nowhere, the Shredder returns. Um, you would know this. Like, in the first movie, you would see, you know how it's Raphael gets screwed up by the foot? Mm -hmm. In the comic book, it's Leonardo that gets screwed up. They go back, they go to the farmhouse up in North Hampton, North Hampton, mm -hmm. New York. And... Like, like, if you, when you're reading the, this comic book, you would actually, if you watch the first movie, you'll see a lot of similar bits, like, um, April writing her diary, what the turtles are like, and how they're, how they're recovering from this great loss. And it's actually, they do a lot more character development in this book than you probably would ever see in any movie or TV show. Mm. Like, it was the character developments in this comic book that you got the archetypes for the character. Don, Donatello being a fixer, Michelangelo being a joker, Raphael being tough, Leonardo being the leader. Like, it's in here that you get the major... Character development. I'm gonna have to borrow this off. Yeah, you should. It's actually really good. I should have done the Turtles review. Actually, I'm gonna do a Turtles review. Pass me off. <clears throat> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm gonna tell you the secret history. This originally started as four colored people put together. It was a Mexican, an Arab, a Chinese person, and an African. And they're like, we should fight crime. But crime turned out to be all these big ass corporations run by these stupid ass fucking honkies. So. Nonetheless, Eastman and Laird had a hard time trying to get that funded. So instead, they were like, well, how about if we did Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? And surprise, surprise, it got published. The other thing about the Ultimate Collection is that you would actually will get, after each issue, you would actually get a, a little kind of like um, conversation about what's going on in each every single issue with Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman. Them saying, I like this piece, I like this piece, this is what we're trying to do in this work. And every single issue. So every single comic, and actually at the end, has a little blurb both from both the artists and both the writers saying what's going on, why they did it, what they enjoyed, what they didn't enjoy. So it's nice to see. So if you're if you're a Turtles fan, it's something very, definitely interesting to pick up and take a look at. One for the nostalgia of it. Two. Whoa! Did you feel that jump in the video? Yeah, I did. I, I wonder what that was. Oh wait, I'm getting a message. Oh, here it is. Dear Hack Director. Wow. Please, no, no, this is me. This is coming from the universe. Dear Hack Director, please, under all circumstances, clear the memory on the video camera. When you don't clear the memory on the video camera, the memory gets full and we can't record no more. Hold on. I'm getting an incoming message too. Oh, here. <laughs> oh, shit, save shit. No, 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 flip the page over. Oh, there we go. Dear Hack Co host, don't ever do another fucking letter scenario <laughs> again. So awkward. What are you reviewing this week? What am I reviewing this week? It's a good question. I'm reviewing non-Marvel comics this week. Sounds good. But Mike, I have to tell you, it was it was it was, it was a fairly difficult week. So I'll just start. Yesterday, or no, the day before yesterday, some douchebag who looked very similar to the director, <coughs> the hack director of this show comes into my store. He's like, Ock. I'm like, yeah. He's like, you need to read this fucking hideous piece of junk. I'm like, what? Why would I read something shitty? And then I realized he told me it was good. It wasn't until afterwards where I imagined him saying it was a hideous piece of junk because that's how I felt after I read it. It is Matt Fraction's newest space sci-fi continuum nonsense called Odyssey. O-D-Y-C, which are literally four ships. If, if you're wondering why they don't look like letters, they're four ships. Anyways, um, it's a story that apparently takes place following the Iliad, I guess that's Homer's adventure, Homer's Odyssey. Oh, yeah, Homer's, yeah. Except it's all femme fatales. I'm not too familiar with Homer's Odyssey because quite frankly, <clears throat> I'm sick of reading white literature, which is, I'm surrounded by it. So, 
what can I say good about this? Because if you can't say anything good, don't say nothing at all. Uh, Christian Ward, the guy who did the art, fucking impeccable. And uh, if you like that space trippy shit, like I shouldn't diss it. Like it was, it was well written. I just, it wasn't my cup of tea. Okay, cool. You're running around this space. Oh, you went to a war. Oh, my war is over. Oh, blah 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 blah. Oh, the gods are pissed. Poseidon's pissed. Let's fuck up some shit. Oh my god, this bitch snitched. Blah blah blah. Like it's kind of fucking. It's not my cup of tea. Um, but like for three ninety nine, I think the first one was three ninety nine, eh? I think the first one was the four bucks, yeah. Yeah, it's the the amount of reading that you get out of this goddamn comic is fucking absolutely insane, and the way they put it together is 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 really really well done. Um, like you get a you get a star map, uh, a brief history on on the entirety of the the universe in which Odyssey takes place. Uh, and the art, like I said, is, is just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the way everything's put together is really good. Um, so, overall, it's, it's, it's not my cup of tea, but, like, you know, if you're a fan of acid or other psychedelic drugs, definitely pick it up. Uh, it's cheaper than anything you'd be taking to read it, so I'd definitely say pick it up. So, Unless you a super thug such as myself, don't pick that shit up. You'll be like, what the fuck is going on up in this motherfucking piece, man? These motherfuckers are soft as shit, man. They're just coming out of all where I don't want to get away anyway. Man. They're fucking... Anyways. Odyssey. O-D-Y-C. Up on the TV, motherfuckers. Go get that shit if you like space trippy ass shit. Mad Fraction, man. Come back to Earth. Write something that doesn't take me... A year and a half to figure out what the fuck you're going on about. Okay. My last image comic I read is Captain America and the Mighty Avengers. Now you might be like, whoa, walk, Captain America is Marvel. But since they came up with the death of Wolverine, I can't respect them with anything. Plus, on top of that, that's a black guy on the cover, so it can't be a Marvel comic because I don't think colored people exist in the Marvel universe on that. Let's say Luke Cage or Black Panther. Because actually, quite frankly, I think he is one of two minorities with a title to themselves. Marvel? Oh, well, three. Miss Marvel, yeah. Storm, and then uh, Captain America. Like, of course, you could sit there and say there's four because technically there's Captain America and Captain America and the Mighty Avengers. But, no. That's one. That's one. He shares one. He's the lead of the Mighty Avengers. Anyways, this one was kind of funny. Uh, Luke Cage sells the Mighty Avengers in it. <laughs> Spoiler alert. So I thought that was funny. And, uh... Actually, now that I think of it, there's a lot of minorities in the Mighty Avengers. It's like they weren't good enough to be in the Avengers. <laughs> so they're like, all you fucking hat-colored motherfuckers. Get in there. Get in there. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh... It's, it's pretty... It's pretty bad. So... Yeah, actually, I think the, the team is comprised of, like, fucking a lot of colored people. I'm not getting into the details of this, though, because... Fuck them. Hey, that's my review. Cool. If we come out here and we say the number one was good, that doesn't mean the number two, three, four, that's five, true. six, or seven are going to be good. In fact, it almost seems like anyone who writes comics knows how to write a pretty good number one. Yeah, that's true. So don't believe the hype on number ones. What are you looking forward to, Mike? Um, it's coming out in February. It will be Spider Gwen. You and your fucking Spider, Spider Man. People. Yeah, I know. Again. Again. We almost had one issue without Spider Nothing. But then again, I guess every time I, I keep bringing up Death of Wolverine, like, oh my god, man. Anyway, so what's happening is that out of Edge of the Spider Verse, they put in, it will be Gwen Stacy as Spider Woman. So much fanfare and so many people wanted it to be a comic that they brought the original artist and writer back to do a full time. So, could be good. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully they don't just completely do a hack job on it. I, I'm just hoping. Well, it's Marvel. I know. That's what I'm fearing. It, it looks like it could be a great character. She could be wonderful. She can actually go places where they never, ever take Peter. Ooh, Gwen Stacy is... Like, yeah, of course. The females wash them. Like, what the fuck do you mean she, they can take her more places? Well, the thing is, like, traditionally, like, she What did, are they going to do? Traditionally, they just she kill has, her. She makes, like, a fucking tampon out of her webs? Like, what's the difference between what she does and what Spider-Man does? They're both spider people. No, I know. I'm saying, in terms of character development, they rarely move Peter Parker anywhere. 
they rarely move Gwen Stacy anywhere. She's I know that. No, dead. I'm saying because in the look, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. In the past, they went from being alive to, to being dead. dead. Now they're going to take her back from, to being alive to that. Yeah, depending on the continuity. But this time they're going to take her from being alive to, to Spider Woman to God knows what. I'm looking forward to, to seeing Spider Woman. They, yeah, they're seeing where they take her. <laughs> to Cosmic Spider Woman? That'd be cool. Peter Parker already went. <laughs> like, that's all I'm saying. Like, you got Peter Parker who's been around for how long? 70 years? I'm not even guessing because this dude's it's long. It's, a long it's longer than I've been around. It's a long ass so. motherfucking yeah. time. We'll have a cool graphic, maybe two, just to piss off Scott. We can get like Spider Man swinging from one screen to the other side with the data when he first appeared. Yeah. If he can't do that, for the only time you'll hear me in this show, please comment about how hack our director is. Please. We, we need to get more evidence to just tell him what the reality is. Well, he doesn't I'm, believe us. We need comments. Well, you don't believe me either. Belief starts with one, all right? What the fuck can Gwen Stacy do that's different than what Peter Parker has done? No, I'm not talking about physical capabilities. I'm talking about where they can take a character. I'm, I'm talking about where they can take a character. If you're they telling me you're talking okay. about me saying that on physical disability, <laughs> then you're trying to say I'm saying women can't do the same thing Peter Parker can. No, 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 no. I'm not. No, no. What I'm saying is that with Peter Parker, you have many, many decades of established canon. Okay, of, what can Gwen Stacy do that, that's, that varies from what Peter Parker did? Play drums. Are you kidding me? We're going to have a story. This is what you're excited about Gwen Stacy <laughs> no, and Spider-Man. No, because you're chirping me. I'm saying that... There, she is a blank slate right now. Hers being Spider-Man Woman is a literal blank slate. It's a slate that's already been written, though, man. Like, what can any Spider-Man do that Sp Peter Parker hasn't done already? Man? Even Spider-Man Noir, he literally just did the same shit Peter Parker did. Just not the same time frame, not the same fucking universe. It's well, he shot people. That's different. Peter Parker shoots people. Yeah, in Noir he does. In normal life he does. With web slingers. No, 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 I'm talking with bullets <laughs> and ending their lives. That's, you're just talking about what he's using to shoot somebody. Like, yeah. What do you mean, ending their lives? He ain't no when you shoot someone with a bullet, he usually kills no. them. No. No. Not necessarily. I can shoot you a hundred times. I know, you should foot. be, yeah, yeah. And I'd be just fine. I know. So no, you won't have a foot. have a foot, yeah, it's true. <laughs> and if you don't get medical attention, you'll die. But nonetheless, you said he shoots people, so does Peter Parker. Next. <laughs> they wear masks. Costume's cool. <laughs> Next. But nonetheless, you said he shoots people, so does Peter Parker. Next. <laughs> they wear masks. Costume's cool. <laughs> Next. He fights crime. Okay, no, no, one of, the, one of the things is that her father knows that she's Spider-Woman. Yeah. And she's all, he's also leading the charge to arrest her. So Aunt May knew that Peter Aunt. Parker was Spider-Man. Who? Aunt May knew that. Yeah, but Aunt May was <clears throat> the fucking head of the police force and it was bound by duty to arrest. Which is a nice dynamic to play off of. Okay, you got half a point there. There you go. I got one. So she's running from the police, similarly to Peter Parker. Yeah. When he's dressed as Spider-Man. Yeah. I can't win this one, can I? There's nothing to look forward to, my friend. I know. What am I looking Oh, you know what I'm looking forward to? Comic Book Girl 19. Sending me a letter written by her lawyer to stop mentioning her on this show. Because then that would be, to me, it would be like the first step in like a mutually beneficial, affectionate relationship. You know yeah, what I'm saying? No, exactly, yeah. First contact. So, it'll yeah. work. Alan Moore. That's going to be cool. The most respectable fucking writer I've ever heard of in my life. He's doing one of the least respectable series. It's, it's going to be good. Uh, it depends. But honest to God, actually, I got I to gotta have a side foot on Alan Moore because this guy, no, like, to me... I'm not a fan of what he writes, and I've read a bunch of his stuff. Uh, Neonomicon, I read all the, the, the V for Vendetta, the, uh, all his older shit. I tried reading Miracle Man, wasn't really a big fan of it. But nonetheless, this guy is a stand-up motherfucker, man. Like, f from my understanding, he didn't take the loyalty check from V for Vendetta because he, be, he didn't want it to be turned into a movie in the first place. He didn't take one for a Watchman because yeah. he didn't want it. It's impossible to tell that story <laughs> through the movie medium. Like, it is literally, with all the, if, if you've read The Watchmen, I know right now you're probably agreeing with me, like, yeah, yeah. correct. I mean, it's a good movie. It's, it's, it's a good movie, but it's not the comic book. 
On top of that, DC did a series there before the Watchmen, and they put together a bunch of their fucking top writers to do all these stories about these heroes from that. Yeah. And he lost his shit on that. He was yeah, like, that's yeah. beyond the point. Like, everything you need to know about the heroes in the Watchmen is literally yeah, it's all it's inside that series. It's yeah. So he didn't, he didn't even want that. He was like, no, I don't, want a, I don't want a penny from it, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then on top of that, Marvel then goes, does some stupid ass shit because, you know, they're too busy coming up with the same story over and over again, just different characters. And every once in a while, when they want to get really frisky, they'll make a black Captain America. Uh, they took Miracle Man, they redid it. Alan Moore said, get my name off of that fucking thing, man. Like, literally, when you open up Miracle Man, if you look at a new print version of Miracle Man, it says, written by the original writer. Not Alan Moore. <laughs> so, Alan Moore, you're a motherfucking gangster. That's sweet. And a motherfucking time of fucking Cottonelle motherfuckers, man. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching Hide Your Teeth, and we'll uh, see you next week. If both of us make it till next week. <laughs> no, I don't know. That's 50-50, that's but we'll figure it out. <laughs> see you next time. Scott's unlucky, so he'll be here next week. <laughs> <laughs>